a full of fans tuning in to hear the uh, spickle spackle that I got to say. Uh, humbling, humbling. We've come a long way since season one, boys and girls, and this is the first uh, solo podcast, uh, mainly because I got the goddamn Rona, and now I'm, I'm relegated to doing it by myself just till I'm not contagious anymore, but, but screw it. Um, some of the changes from season one to season two. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I know you've all been waiting with bated breath. When is he going to come back with the tap? Well, here it is. Here it is. Better late than never, I suppose. Um, outtakes would take me hours in the first season. I would just go off and say something silly or stutter or try to make it as perfect as possible, and I would find that the authenticity, the genuine nature of it is just less and less because I'm, like, repeating things. This would go on, I'm, I sh- I'm your huckleberry. Just sitting, like, damn it, going, turning off my camera, turning it back up, well, the camera, re-recording on on GarageBand, it is just, I mean, worth the effort for sure, worth the pursuit of perfection, but when I'm seeing other Instagram channels or other influencers, it's people essentially just being them. It's not to say that if you screw up that you can't take a, have a different second take or whatever, but for the most part in these little ramblings, I want every episode to have like a theme, story, what have you. Uh, I just want to be, be me. I, I do want to be as perfect as possible, but we'll never get there. It's trial and error. And namesake. So we're going to get silly with it. I'm just going to try to flow, be me. I ramble. I digress. I guess that's just what humans do. Look at me speaking to this iPhone 11. Oh, the last phone I'm ever going to get. I f- it's looking sleek and sexy. I'm aroused when I look at this phone. Damn it. Oh, look at me, look at it. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Uh, solid phone, upgraded tech. Um, the hiatus for the longest time. Boy, howdy. I guess uh, this would be a good segue into talking about what the theme of this episode is, which is now officially 2022, which means we went through 2021. And boy, howdy, what do I got to f- My little notebook here. I just had some like key points and whatnot, and I just want to really highlight the fact that we could just focus on the goddamn negatives. We can focus on the negatives till the cows come home, and it will consume us, and we'll live and die negative. Or we can try to say, all right, this was a silver linings, damn it. Everybody focuses on negative, myself included. So I'm going to address the negative sh- From my, obviously, I can only speak from my perspective, my point of view, and uh, I, I went through what I got out of it, what all the bullshit, positive nuggets I was uh, able to pull out of this uh, piece of shit. Yeah, cheers to that coffee, by the way. Ooh wee! So. uh what was I rambling on before I digressed into the point of the show? Ah, yes, the reasoning for the hiatus. I uh, was watching the dogs at my parents' place down the dirt road, thinking nothing of my spot, which I'm in right now, the new lunchbox. Here we go. Tap. Uh, I'm down there watching the dogs, and the next morning I show up, nothing seems out of the ordinary, and then I'm about to leave to work, and... Uh, I go to get my red duffel bag that has my, what formerly known, I'm sure she's still out there somewhere, the porn star, my first audio, um, audio piece of equipment, the, where you put all the XLR cables, where you get the audio from this cable, goes into the audio device, pumps it in the computer. It's fascinating stuff. Uh, took that and the duffel bag also had two microphone stands and then a Viking Snuggie that I wrapped around the audio device to keep it safe. All that was taken, the duffel bag, and just that, out of my house, some piece of They lifted an unlocked window, climbed in, took it, and then they took this dope little guest book that I had with a leather like covering, you just write your name in it, something I found thriftily. And uh, damn it, took both those things. I noticed one thing that, that stood out, the one thing, 
I uh, got home and I have this old typewriter in like the front room, which is just kind of a decorative piece. And the front of it, the casing, was knocked over. Like there's no way, it's, it's too level on the table that it's on to just fall over by itself. The surface area supports it. It got knocked over. Somebody took just that. Why not take my PlayStation? Why not go rummaging through the rest of the house? Clearly I'm not there. Uh, got got. I got got. The majority of people I talked to are saying that it was somebody that I know, which sucks ass because I feel very proud of the company that I keep and can... Because I only really want to keep company with friends and... It would just kill me to find out who did it and if it was one of my friends. And I, that's why it's so unbelievable because, like I was saying, I pride myself in the character of the company I keep. I could speak of anybody that comes to mind right now. I could go to bat for him. Like, this, this is a personal character. Certainly nobody that uh, would um, come down and steal it. So it's not to say that some rando didn't just come off the street and just swoop it. All varied happenstantially. I don't even know the word, if that's a word, but... I'd rather believe that than start getting paranoid and thinking less of my friends or any anybody that I keep a close circle with. Just thinking they're capable of it would totally suck. And that is just one example, but I think there's a lot of other examples that resonate with people. Everybody has their own instance where there's mistrust. And I think what I experienced is one of many stories, maybe not as dramatic, but of second guessing. You're like, Second guessing a friend or, or looking at them a different way or just anybody say you find out they're vaccinated or unvaccinated or they believe this political have this political affiliation, the what have you, just the the self poisoning, the self poisoning of it all, just ewy. So I'd, it it sucks and it's easy to get riled up. I was pretty pretty heated, just feeling like violated and just like really somebody's in my house. So did a couple things. Uh, Put a lock on the door on the inside. I don't give a f fuck anymore. I'm about that life. I got this key hanging around and I keep it with me. I keep, I'm not gonna tell you where I keep it in case the thief is listening. Of course they're a fan of the tap, you sick fuck. Dramatic, maybe, maybe not. I went out and got my first gun. Got it, went through the paperwork, took the test, passed the test. And um, just because one day I will have a family in this house and the thought of some Vagabond off the street coming in and me being defenseless. I would, oh, that would suck. And we are in fact 2022 now, and because of said past year that I am supposed to be talking about, uh, anything's possible. People are out of their fing minds, and I, it sucks. I, I, I'm hoping, best case scenario, I only take my gun out to clean it and to practice. Never, ever, 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 ever have to brandish it, put it on social media, anything like that. It is there for a purpose, and it's not to be fucking around with or playing around with. It's learning about and for defensive purposes only. God bless it. Um, so yeah, feel a little bit safer that way. Uh, so right things, but I did have a uh, have things in chronological order. Damn it. So. Uh, Lest I ramble now, I do have something of a lifeline, this year in review, and I put on top, uh, through calamity comes clarity. That was like my kind of thought at the end of all, like writing all this down, and it's clarity if you choose for it to be there. It's there. It's fucking there. Or you can just get wrapped up in all this shit and let this hate and calamity distort your view on the world. I mean, it's there. It's definitely in the periphery at all times, no matter how clear of a head you have. But the clarity definitely helps when you pull it out. That's gratitudes, I suppose, which I've heard are supposed to be good when you address them. Speak them out loud. So I guess I'm just trying to S Buddha's D and just motorboat those big golden boobies in his. Mm -mm -mm. Here we go. So end it. <laughs> I'll get to that later. So beginning of the year, let's see. Upsetting. Super volatile. Oh, my God. 2020. Let's talk about that year. No, we're not. That year, there was an election I remember being super volatile, emotionally just distraught of just the state of the world, how disgusting people were from that uh, election, just from the candidates to the people just ripping each other's heads off, top to bottom, thumbs down, America, thumbs down on your democratic process and just how you look doing Shame. It. For shame. shame. Just disgusting. Shame. And uh, I just... 
stuck my head in the f-ing dirt and you know of course but i still have my phone in the dirt with me because i'm gonna be in the dirt like this checking social media and all the bullshit going on uh instagram and facebook not a good primary source of information something uh i found out good lord no you can find that out too just think about it when you're discussing something and somebody asks you what you're talking about tries to you know your annotated bibliography if you say i saw it off of instagram you sound like sound like a real jackass or facebook or just whatever <laughs> anyways just check your sources check your facts try and i'm speaking from experience of someone who's been in that pigeonhole i've been that jackass where i'll i'll realize i'm trying to backtrack and make it sound that my source is something nicer than what it is. Some stupid f***ing meme I saw on a story on Instagram, and I'll kind of mention it, and you know, sometimes you speak out of your ass. All the time you speak out of your ass. Somebody calls you out, and you're So, just, mm, you know, there's gotta be an internal bull meter that's going off in everybody. I, there, there, it's, it's gotta be there to know, like, when you sit down and really ask yourself, is this source credible? Is this legit? Or does it just say what I want it to say? <laughs> just... Uh, anyways, anyways, moving on. So yeah, that that was just social media for sure. I was seeing what a true beast it is and how it manipulates people and how it perpetuates hate in such a vast and disastrous way. Um, I had a job. I was pretty happy in it doing social media in Vacaville, uh, but yet discontent, wholeheartedly discontent with society and the downward spiral. Just gross. Uh, emotionally draining, I have a note here. Very emotionally draining. When you let it, when you just get down, stuck in the mud, talking about bullshit, interacting with it all day, checking the memes, checking your phone every five seconds, your friends bombarding you, people talking about it, there's no getting away from it. And it's, it's so interweaved with COVID and politics. It, politics. It's all one big glob cluster of conversation. It's, it could just morph and, 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 fill the void and gaps of, of what people want to talk about or feel like they have to talk about it's just it it's all consuming if you let it and if you're not talking about it, oh you're not taking life seriously i'm you know, rambling on about others my perception of what others are probably thinking of the whole situation uh Mm. I got caught up in it something fierce, not gonna lie. I tried to keep things as neutral as possible. Always, I get, always wanted to keep things neutral when talking to anybody of any side of political affiliation. Um, but just getting so angry and caught up in it, and when it was done, I was like, fuck this. Elections, all that politics, I'm just so just over it. It and its hold on people's values and how they see and value one another based solely on political affiliations that really hurt that really sucked and i'd just be willing to believe that if two random people say a purple haired girl from san francisco and some wheat out of the mouth hick from georgia sit down and just have a conversation don't talk talk about politics one iota people get along over objective or whatever, whether basic things, sports, art, music, but they both like Def, Le- Def Leppard, but they both like Lindsey Sterling. Country Boy's just about it. You know, he, he, he aspires on the fiddle. <coughs> People get along and then politics or religion get spilled, sprinkled and everything. Politics and religion, you are the turn in the punch bowl of an otherwise great social interaction that two people could have. And it depends on the people too. What if it does bring get brought up into the conversation, but they can handle it because they can have a conversation except the fact that other people have different points of views and values and morals. <clears throat> it's okay not to hate each other. Public service announcement right there, but back to the action. Oh, man. The whole politics of it all, but people can get along. It's just... You gotta be willing to, and not everybody is willing to. That's a fact, because you're too goddamn prideful. Uh, fires. Man. What a pain in the ass, those fucking fires. Oh. What goodness comes out of the politics? It's <laughs> silver lining for that. Before I move on to the fires. It's just knowing what you don't want. Wow. I guess I can speak for myself. It's seeing what I don't want to see. And people. And the news. And a government. And the world at large. 
Uh, because news and social media, that's all we really get. All these outside sources. And so I've really resided in trying to focus wholeheartedly on those around me, my family, my town. Winters feels somewhat removed from the, the, the bull going on in the world. All of the ruckus. You get some, you know, we live in the, this country, but people are just down to earth. I don't feel judged walking in town. People wear masks, what have you, but you know, I'll get into masks later. But people are just relaxed, they're calm, and I want to maintain that as good as possible. And just try to be a good, as good a person as, poss as possible, block out the rest of the world, and just focus on mine, my own, my tribe, my town, writing, all that shit. Not the extended universe, for whatever that is. I guess this is my lifeline out there. Anybody listen to the tap? Anybody listen to this right now? Winners of the gym. Winners is a goddamn gym. I'm trying to reach out and Potatoes. get heads to cool off enough for people to have a conversation. Them, stick them in a I hope. Um, so yeah, it's all what I don't want. I mean, there were some good parts, like learning opportunities in last year politically and whatnot. But yeah, exactly what you don't want to see. Guess that's it. Trying, oh man, life, that life is on hard mode. It was an opportunity to try to empathize with people, and I'd say, for, according to social media and the media at large, uh, we failed miserably at that, the compassion and empathy. But I think there's a lot more going on for people that are having conversations that aren't recorded or at a bar. People are having conversations, I bet. I bet they're out there uh, with cool heads, buying one another drinks, and accepting the fact that they have different uh, ideologies. And they cheers to that. And I think differences are what keep it, that's what keeps everybody in check the checks and balances different points of view it's a great thing don't hate each other for fires oh my god scorch the fuck sky thank god for dylan a here's a teaser he's about to be on the tap coming up dylan a the hot shot and a special guest who fire fights fires with him uh boy what a tease i'm i'm all excited about that tease god damn it shout out to uh cal fire shout out to hot shots shout out to Every local fire department, Winter's Fire Department, all you guys from out of state, firefighters in general, you're just sucking in air, going hard, and nobody, I can't say that nobody gives a shit, but golly, I, as bad as that, those fires were for me, I could not imagine fighting that shit, staying up for three days straight at a time, get a 20 minute power nap, you're back out there, you have to shit your pants because the fire's too close. You're breathing in all the smoke. Um, small anecdote. Austin Calvi and I were hiking the Blue Ridge Trail and we stopped about halfway up just huffing and puffing on a beautiful fucking day. And I'm just sitting there like, man, Dylan A be going up hills more vertical than this with about 100 pounds of equipment on his back. No oxygen mask with just thick hot smoke and ash and a bunch of other nasty little particles going straight into his lungs through his nose penetrating his fucking soul these guys are out there these guys and gals everything in between they're busting their fucking asses every single day and uh they need all the love and support they can get and donations or what have you hopefully more money gets tossed into deforesting and whatnot uh, as if these disasters, we lost a town for Christ's sake, like Paradise, we've lost Middletown, to name a few. When is the wake-up call going to happen? I mean, you can't stop nature, but you can at least deforest and have mitigative uh, actions being taken. I don't know if mitigative is working. Just try to soften the blow when it does come. You can't stop it, but like, we could, do be, we could definitely be doing the better than what we're doing but god bless the firemen getting the job done the sky was scorched for so much of the summer went up i wouldn't say it ruined a tahoe trip uh, up there with the fam but certainly didn't help anything because part of getting my uh jollies off in tahoe is just seeing seeing the the beauty seeing the mountains the sky the water smelling that air breathing it in letting the that, that fresh pine needle air just replenish my soul and I didn't get that it really sucked uh, it was gross able to go out jet skiing which was dope but it was just bleak not good for the morale the pandemic flying around people hate each other it was just very indicative uh, of the world around us you know 
so above as it is below. Just look at it all. I think nature's just kind of showing us like what what our deal is, just because all this energy, all this negative energy going out. Mother Nature's feeling it. She's sensing it. The Earth knows. The universe knows all this hate and anger spewing out. So it's gonna have some adverse effects. Sorry if that sounds all hippy dippy. Sorry for being right. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyways. So, uh, oh, I'm getting all emotional on you guys here. Mm, what was I talking about before I just went crazy there? Sorry for being right. Negative energy. Mother Nature. Fires. Oh, the fires. Made kayaking tough. Running. I wanted to run. It's through the fires. It definitely... I didn't need that harsh of a lesson or a reminder, only speaking for myself, to truly appreciate the sky to truly just look at the blue, see the clouds, and just enjoy it, to see the sun. And not having that was a real big bummer because I'd go out to lunch every single day at Andrews Park across the street at, uh, in Vacaville. And it was super tough, like just depressing as all hell not being able to see the sky because life, at least for me as someone who enjoys the outdoors, it's not complete unless there's the sky. This, it's, it's part of living. The, the beauty of it and that's why I would never go to fucking LA or Beijing just places you can't get that humans need to see blue skies some clouds raining on them any like just nature it's part of nature and we need it there did not need the wildfires to block that shit out for a while but anyways moving forward uh, went to Austin, got out of the fucking fire, went to Austin for uh, my buddy's bachelor party. It was dope. We had Terry Blacks. Shout out Terry Blacks. Shout out Terry Blacks. What, what barbecue? <laughs> Delicious, divine. Stuffed my fat face. We drank mightily, heavily. And uh, that, I went to San Antonio before that for a wedding. So, a lot of wildfires in the springtime. Fucking dope. San Antonio was just beautiful. The wedding itself just uh, a monsoon came through, just almost ruined everything, but we persevered. The rain let up just a little bit. Was able to drink and whatnot. It's just so much wildlife out there. Texas is beautiful. Oh my God. Rolling hills and just in the springtime is perfect. Just seeing all the wildflowers and whatnot. Uh, returned a couple months later in Austin, enjoying ourselves and I get a fucking call. Silence, computer. You filthy animal. Anyways, I get a call like the day before we're leaving, maybe a day or two, and uh, a close family friend passed away. This is in June. It's like, fuck. It, it was seen yet unforeseen. You know, I'll, I'll vary the details. It, it just came as because it sucked because we thought our friend was getting better. And he's an older man, and uh, he passed away. Really sucked. Again, a, a guy I've known since I was a, a pipsqueak. A pipsqueak. And um, I remember just kind of being alone over there in uh, Austin, just in a room. And I, I got a good cry. And I didn't think I'd be bawling that much. But I fucking, I, 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 I gifted myself those fucking tears. I was, I was, I was losing it. Uh, God. So I took about half hour, 45 minutes just to chill, be myself. Went back, sucked it up, went with the boys. like talked to my buddy, let him know what was up. And... But we had beers and we we're good. Just kept going. Uh, following up on that, man, went to a that was I went to a military funeral for for that one for Ross, and that was awesome. Seeing the honor guard do like play the taps and to have their flawless motions when they're unfolding and presenting the flag, folding it up, just like robots, perfection. They're better than robots because they're humans and they're perfect. It's phenomenal watching these guys do what they do because there's so much dignity and honor and respect in the entire process so it's military tip of the cap for that amazing uh, sh uh, show in, uh, of honor so so that, that sucked came back home and I would say maybe two weeks, two, three weeks uh, my dog Sammy is just having a real tough time she's probably i want to say a 13 14 year old lab and i think she like hurt herself like she s did the splits or something like lost her balance one day and we think she like tore something like in her back right leg oh 
it was just getting bad and then my mom was saying it was getting worse and then soon enough it's like we gotta call the vet because Sammy's in constant pain like they're having a drugger just so she's not in some pain but she every waking moment was agony hopping down on, on three legs just something tore something bad happened and uh, we were hoping to get better just didn't and made the call and it was god I'll do a separate episode on this I don't want to dampen it too bad but what an experience that like that last day that last week was just so long the last night with her just uh, that was an adventure I made it something to remember and I'll give that its own separate episode I'm getting choked on it right now because that was a very close and personal thing that happened with uh, my dog and I but her passing away we had to put her down just I'm still hurting I'm fucked up over it dude I luckily we, we buried her next to the dirt road I say what's up to her every single time I pass. It's tough. She's right next to Reggie. Fucking Sam, dude. Had that dog for over 10 years. And just what... Uh, just shows me what fight is. Her and... Reggie passed away this year, too. Her... No, no. He, he was a couple years ago. Uh, just seeing how much fight she had. How much fight dogs have. And it's like you think you, you've you given it all. You got fucking more to give, goddammit, until someone has to put you down. Keep going till someone else tells you don't go anymore. Then keep going. That's that, that drive, that fight, and it really resonated with me. And then uh, that very same day, I'm supposed to go to Reno for my cousin Travis's bachelor party. I was like, man, I, I, may, I might just go by myself. It's all smoky out. Or it was clear in winters, but we're going to go to Reno. And Reno was... Just, I'm not sure how dark the, the meter is. It, it's, it was all the way. It's close to what um, firefighters breathe in. Because if we thought it was bad, it was like purple tear or whatever for toxicity. Imagine being a goddamn fireman. You're right there. You are getting it. You are getting it. Heat and all, baby. Facial. Um, I decide, fuck it. Uh, I'm going to go. I, mean, I went with my buddy AJ. We... He, I told him what was up. He's like, bro, like, I got you. I, I just figured going out and hanging out with some friends. It was a joint one was with all the groomsmen and the bridesmaids. We were going to, like, party together that first night, just chill, like, an old-school college party. It was so much fun, and I'm glad I went because it helped get my mind off of Sammy. It was a devastating, just falling as bad as you think losing a dog for over, had for over 10 years could be. Imagine that. Yeah, it's as bad as you think it is. As bad, at worst. It sucks. Oh, my God. But friends and, and keeping your mind occupied, that definitely helped. Um, no, I'm just kind of memorializing her a little bit. In a sh- Here's a sh- teaser for a short story I'm writing right now. Uh, Sammy's in it for goddamn sure. She's a f***ing <laughs> hero. Indeed. Oh, that black lab. So losing Sammy was tough. Definitely a key moment. So, yeah, this is... Within a month of Ross passing away, Sammy passes away. And then by that time, oh, job security. I'm a little, uh, God, Michael J. Fox shaky about it. Sorry, Michael J. That was, that was, that was terrible. I'm sorry. I love you. Um, I'll vary the details. I'm trying to wear a lot of blame, as Jocko would say, take extreme ownership. But goddamn, I'd say certain forces that be, certain people involved, business tactics. Oh, I'm going to vary the details. I could go on a long, long, long rant. And that wouldn't get me anywhere. I'd just be more salty and just be spewing more negativity. But uh, the job ended up just getting business run into the fucking ground. Just just kaboom blew up my face luckily i was able to rebound and work full time for the winners express and the davis enterprise two part times combined to full time i got my 40 hours got my work that i'm passionate about so i guess that is a silver lining too for that one uh yeah talk fires losing the job that was god pain in the yeah i was so angry because i loved that job i really did and it got spoiled and sullied and uh, I'm blessed to have the gig that I have right now, which is fucking awesome. And um, just learning of how not to run a business. Learn that and just professionalism, how much that means to me, uh, work ethic. Uh, there, 
I know I'm speaking all cryptically, but... Oh, well. This is all for me. Anyways. <laughs> uh, but yeah, learn from that. Moving forward. Yeah, writing paper. I'm a paper boy. I'm a paper boy. Writing size. I write so fucking much. It's ridiculous. Uh, but I love it. Grat talk about gratitude. My fucking digits. My hands. My fingers. Just... Being able to do the things I do, but I'll get into gratitudes later. Uh, so yeah, same as tough job, working from home. I mean, oh yeah, like the the time autonomy is so fucking perfect. I can wake up when I want to early, then the 5 a.m. hour, boys and girls. Do it. It'll change your fucking life having more time. Unless you're a night owl, adjust accordingly. If you're more productive and creative at night, hell, how about it then? Anyways. Um, bu- 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 um, waking up when I want to, exercise when I can, working. Sometimes I'll work on the weekend a little bit. It just works out that way. Right for the paper, guys. It is the bee's knees. Uh, blah 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 blah. Writing a bunch of short stories. Yeah, this this year taking a break from writing the uh, main novel, like the one. The I want to say it's Magnum Opus, but it's the one that kind of started this whole writing love affair of mine gonna get back into that 2022 because I've just been mewling stewing on it thinking of different ways to tell the story and I'm uh, ready to give it another shot in the meantime I've been writing a lot of short stories which has been super fulfilling Uh, some are better than others for sure Um, definitely getting you get better as a writer every day but some of the stories I'm like let's fucking go like when they felt inspired I got it done and it felt like uh, I had something inside of me that I had to get out and I got it out and that is a very satisfying feeling when it's done to my liking there's some that just fall short you're like eh swing and a miss eh but the one I'm writing right now I'm juiced about um, and just going back to writing one story it was a little tough because you get all these ideas while you're writing this one story the big one you get all these ideas for little short stories. Like, ah, if I can get out of here, because I gotta focus on this this big one. Because, like, my fear is if I, like, deviate from it, am I gonna go back, or am I just gonna get sucked into writing short stories like I have been for the past year? So, we'll see. We'll come back at it. I've written one of these fuckers before. I'm gonna do it again in a better way, damn it. Get ready, world. Um, yeah, writing a bunch. Podcasting, yeah, all that shit got stolen throughout the year that was I mean we're back now though got my stuff back was able to finish off the year with some rather oh so anyways lost my job back to the main story yeah and then uh, after that someone near and dear to me uh, was suffering from pretty severe uh, mental issues and that's really hard to bear it uh, so yeah all that within a couple months 2021 was a motherfucker <laughs> just people Loved ones dying, all that. Yeah, oh, fuck it. 2021. But you get through it, and that's probably the biggest finale. Oh, Thanksgiving was, was good, and then, you know, it's like, it's tough with the holidays when uh, there's mental issues and whatnot, but going to Christmas, <laughs> went to Christmas Eve get together, someone bio nuked the whole fucking family, and I've been dip diving dodging covid for ever since it started and it finally got me pow right in the kisser right in my fucking crawl i i felt great rest of christmas day like saturday felt great sunday ran 10 miles that sunday monday tuesday i'm like something's going on i'm just gonna keep sucking down coffee it's gonna be great uh no energy came back. In fact, it got worse, and I just fell apart on Wednesday and just got laid out. And still, I would say I'm laid out about 80. I'll give myself 88%. Just getting randomly fatigued, uh, sniffles, uh, coughing shit up. Still doing that. Uh, no fever, luckily. Very not. I mean, say no headaches, no loss of flavor, anything like that. A very mild case of the Rona, the vid. Um, as far as things go, but yeah, just tired, sleeping more, and uh, probably the reason I'm drinking a little bit of kafifi. Oh, the Rona! What a way to end 2021! A good old heaping pile of Corona up my ass. Uh, what did this year, man? What did I get away? What did I what did I get from it? Just grateful again for my health because I'm never sick. 
I'm never fucking sick. I'm a bastion of health. I worked at a landfill damn near my entire life. All the bad nasties over there, the poison's floating through the air. I breathe it in, the, the body's like, let's go. Like, it's a Russian army of immunity that I have flowing throughout my veins, my body, my vessel. And they're wild sons of bitches. And this was a tough fight, but they prevail every fucking time. I'm about those boys. The immunity. They're about that life. They're about it. They invite the disease. They invite it, and uh, finally they were challenged this time around. I haven't been sick like this in a while. But uh, it was humbling and good to, good reality check that I am indeed human, but it's, ooh, lit a fire in my ass. I want to do more podcast stuff. I want to do more, make more content. I have a bunch of different advertising ideas to promote the podcast, traditional, social, what have you. Uh, I want to work out more. I want to run another goddamn marathon. I want to write this fucking book, wake up earlier, and try to maintain all this but making it feel balanced not rushed or or had to be done if i don't get to something it's not the end of the world but i want to be also more organized because a little more organization that i do have right for the paper i have a nice little board of articles that are due and i move little sticky notes around oh i'm so happy about it uh i just want to be better overall and i think that's good to admit because I feel like I haven't been good mentally not in like crazy way but just uh letting little shit get to me getting easily angry everything that I was preaching about in the beginning of the podcast of not letting bullshit or politics COVID get to you and like it seeps in god bless it I'm a I'm a leaky roof water like it's gonna spill through and it's gonna drip keep dripping on me like Chinese fucking torture uh it I just don't want to be as angry about shit and I can see it like on the road a little bit <laughs> I won't do anything crazy but just the cursing the muttering the petty little actions what can I say like if somebody's riding your ass and on 505 there's a semi on your right side you just go the same speed <laughs> yes who hasn't done that if that's not the greatest feeling in the world lordy anyways um uh, health be able to get through a tough year like this maybe it's priming us for tougher years to come we all got through it that's one thing that can't be taken away from us some better than others um and i just want to keep getting better because i know i'm not where i want to be uh, just in all aspects of life career health body like just mind spirit like all of it like and i think that's a good thing why not to have a finish line you'll never get to i think hopefully next year i won't be as discontent but knowing that I made progress from where I'm at now, level 31, and uh, I want to up my stats, up my 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 character stats. If my health is like this, I want that health bar to go a little bit further. I want my compassion bar to be fucking in the green. Right now, I'd say, God, it's like in the orange or some shit. Not good. Who would want to play this character with very low compassion? Uh, I told myself that. I, I feel like I'm a compassionate person, very uh, empathetic at least. So I can't kill little animals or, or bugs or anything like that. I'm like, fuck, this is a living thing. I couldn't possibly kill this ant. I couldn't possibly, unless they piss me off and then just, ah, me and my opposable, excuse me, my opposable thumbs and eye will destroy. Uh, be water. Yeah, that's <laughs> very routine oriented. I want to be more like water as Bruce Lee would say, which for me, I need to work on, uh, Establishing a routine. I love a routine, but when things change, which they always inevitably do, it's life to change with it, mold to it. Whatever the situation is, be water, go with this goddamn flow, mold to the situation, and pass through. Keep going. Thank you, Bruce Lee. Um, and thank you, 2021, for the challenge. I appreciate that. More years to come as if we, we all personify the year. We blame the year for all of our woes when we need to look in the mirror that's where our problems exist <sighs> I don't like getting political I don't like ah! choosing sides and I'm not gonna choose sides and it's like I ranted about this journaling too. journaling helps I don't do that nearly enough but I did this audio journaling one time on my new phone and I was just outside smoking a doob looking at my Christmas lights in the just blistering cold in you know Northern California and I just started rambling to myself and I was speaking from the heart and it felt really good if I wasn't going to write 
down a journal and if I'm gonna ramble which is apparently what I'm doing right now um, it's it felt good getting things off my chest in a way that writing does sometimes you surprise yourself by what you say or write down in terms of a catharsis or, or God, what's the word that Mr. Schmee uses uh, an epiphany oh that's a little too intense but when things come to mind when you have certain realizations it's good to write it down or to to materialize it uh, either written or vocal in waves um god i've been i digress so far the original fuck point speaking into yeah the the rambling audio journaling i just went on about how upset covid's made me no how upset politics has made me which i talked about before just how polarizing it all is and Oh, the left is this self-righteous radical group against the self-righteous right-wing Nazis. It pick your storyline of hatred, and I, that's why I try to stay as in the middle as possible politically to see things one way, see things another way, and decide what I feel like is best in my heart. And it to say we've gotten to the point where if somebody is vaccinated or unvaccinated that you know everything about them that you're this clearly this illiterate scumbag that um wants to see mankind burn for your own freedom and the, the flip side it's like oh you have this complying sheep that's going to get vaccinated with whatever the government says they they need to take you know let, let big brother take care of you it's like I said, choose your storyline, choose your, your narrative, but um, from my point of view, an unvaccinated person, that it's like the world at large once you get vaccinated. The, the mainstream media, social media, the news, the president, the powers that be, quote unquote, uh, want us to get vaccinated. And we've gotten to a point, I think, where, I don't want to say the line is drawn, but the people that aren't going to get vaccinated aren't going to get it vaccinated. And no amount of ridicule is going to make them real oh okay oh i'm an idiot okay sorry i didn't realize it. let me shoot me up johnny when you ridicule someone into doing something and chastise them and make them feel like shit guilt them into doing something that rarely yields positive results it only sows mistrust and discourse it's just it just sucks that you get it from both sides for sure and i'm gonna try to speak as objective as objectively as possible it sucks that both sides are just so at each other's throats because it's not so much about being right or wrong it's just feeling that you're so right and the other person th if they think differently from you not only do you need them to need to prove them wrong you need to yell at them you need to crush them and they need to suffer because they're wrong they are so wrong and I think an added layer to all the emotional mania is the fact that it's life and death. For me, Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a it's stew. just tough seeing the effort put in, the, the mitigation, and just seeing how the carpet's been ripped out from under society's feet. Where someone who endured it, a relatively, dare I say, in a, a minor case of COVID, all things considered, I'm still alive. Um, is it worth killing society? Yeah. <laughs> How dramatic was that? Is it worth the change? Is it worth where we're at now? The lengths taken. Uh, I don't have the right answer for you. But it also, you know, I, I, I heed George Orwell's uh, teachings, which also feeds into my not wanting to get vaccinated. Um, it's just people hating each other is just an added layer to everything beyond just the fact that there's a health crisis regardless of how it started or not lab made or not whatever it's here it's here um and mask or not whatever but it is it just reminds me so much of politics it's so blended and molded together of one side thinking they're better than thinking they know what's right we're at the standstill. We're, if you're not going to get vaccinated, you're not going to get it. So there needs to be... The, the way we solve this. The way we solve this. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I got this from a hardcore Republican, ladies and gentlemen. The way this... And he said this way before uh, P 
pandemic even happened, talking on the phone. And he said, the way that we get through this, because we're going through the same political this and that with Donald Trump and, and old JoJo. He said, the way that we solve this, the way we start getting along, the way that we eliminate all this hate and mistrust and just greed, envy, just the most disgusting aspects of human nature that we're just spewing all over each other, we fix it with love. We fix it with fucking love. As silly as that might sound, we are so used to hating, which is the opposite side of the coin. Like, think about how the other side feels. Go back to empathy a little bit. I, I asked myself that when I was audio recording or voice journaling. Like, all right, if I was someone who truly was about getting the vaccine, and I got it, and I have kids, which I don't, I want to do everything possible to protect my own to protect my family vaccine all right let's get it it benefit it, it increases our chances of living so we could see grandparents or whatever family or go back to living a normal life that's what that's what this vaccine represents is health safety for the family for the loved ones and a step closer to normalcy and you got a bunch of jackasses who are just waving their 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 flags and their freedom that refuse to get vaccinated because it infringes on their freedom and the in in a matter of life and death like these guys are getting in the way and i'm not happy about it i suppose i can understand if that's the way you feel i mean be like, all right what the hell's the matter with you guys like get with the picture vaccination here it is it's gonna save us it's gonna make like get us out of this because i guarantee you both sides are not pleased with a fucking pandemic going around and we're and just where the world's at these days nobody's happy that's something we can agree on is nobody's happy with where the world's at and so just how the vaccinated side views the unvaccinated unvaccinated uh you know pick your poison of which reason you won't do it if you've read too many sci-fi books or if you think there's a chip in it jesus i don't believe that but it's just the it's the or else that really bugs me um i have a friend who's sfpd for almost nine years who won't get it uh he got religious exemption apparently that was taken away like no more than a week later and now he's getting uh let go after almost after damn near nine years of putting his life on the line for the community very upsetting there's anecdotes abound every which way so i won't you know hit you there like everybody's got a personal story about it it just sucks to see the way it's all happening and honestly for me to have gotten it like to feel trust which i don't feel in the powers that be um i would need to see a lot this is sound very macabre but i need to see more bodies i need to see like at least a billion people dead wow uh, i need to see uh, uh it, it sounds gross and horrifying but that's that would scare me into getting the vaccine like fuck this is gnarly not to say that millions of people have already died from it like i'm not trying to minimize that a death i would be seeing it a different too if my mom died or if a grandparent died most likely possibly mm, they're all vaccinated in my life so we'll see but that's not my case i mean oh it's tough oh what a rabbit hole i've stumbled down here in this year in review because covid was just huge, such a huge part of it uh definitely causes problems in relationships and friendships of just how people view it and you start judging each other because it is relatively life and death relatively like say abortion you know, it's life and death it's this is some people don't take it seriously at all as someone who got it it is incumbent upon you it is your fucking duty just like if you had the flu or strep throat or mono don't spread it to anybody else don't be a dick this is pre-covid protocol don't spread your your germy germs don't do that so that's what i've been doing not spreading my germy germs um there's got to be a middle ground and when i was thinking about it like the the middle ground it, it's not going to be foolproof 100 percent, but it's a start where perhaps we get the insurance companies that since we're supposed to have insurance and we pay for it every month what if they pay for a weekly covid test a weekly covid test i think is enough for people who are unvaccinated to show a little bit of goodwill 
towards the overall well-being of society and as well as those who are vaccinated who are really like adamant about it it's a give and take it's giving a little bit towards the middle it's you create the bridge from either side and together we fucking build that bridge strong we we make it better with maybe other compromises i'm not sure what they'll be but this compromise on both sides those who aren't vaccinated to get tested weekly those who are vaccinated to i'm gonna say allow it we're fucking humans we're all free uh not all of us no don't don't, go north korea or china anyways um human beings are inherently free free will do what you gotta do but for those who are vaccinated be like you know what that shows me that they're at least willing they the unvaccinated they're willing to put in a put a little skin in the game take however long like half hour out of your day drive to davis or wherever get tested get results back the next day have that have it before a sporting event some people yes this is encroaching on freedoms oh my like it's it's a compromise it's a compromise for now and while we're compromising we can work on compassion i certainly hope that through that through weekly tests that that's my solution for now temporary it's a it's a band-aid not not something that's gonna last us throughout the rest of time but a, a little it's a little bit of give and take on both sides and i'm hoping that yes we can agree that all right you, you view something differently all right that, as do i let's maybe there's a little compassion and empathy that someone believes in something so hardcore like all right you got a lot of fervor for how you believe i have a lot same amount maybe more than what i believe in it's passion it takes different forms it likes different things depending on the person and boy howdy look at me preach so through this all this calamity of 2021 let's let's work on loving each other including ourselves Let's work on listening. That's uh, where I like to. That's how you earn the the, the tap stamp. A little tap stamp is to talk tap, speak from the heart, speak true, but you also listen true. You listen to what others have to say, and I'm going to take my own medicine and do my damnedest to do that because I know I wait for my turn to talk quite a bit. Uh, sometimes I see myself doing that when I'm talking to somebody else on the show and just in life to not get so fired up and so emotional when i'm talking about politics or COVID or what have you i hope i didn't offend anybody with my views maybe i said things incorrectly i don't know not trying to offend but if i did oh well i will kill you you're offended it happens i've been offended oh, it's terrible i had to move on turn the page that's the takeaway from this episode, damn it. Turn the page, everybody. Turn the page. Whenever you're going through some shit, turn the page, but don't you forget what you read. That's, That's me signing, signing off for this, this uh, solo, solo episode of The Tap. Have, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. You lose! Good day, sir!